Hello, it's Trucker Joe, sure. and I am going to go and give you an idea of how to make advanced cannons. Uh, special thanks to Damadoc for donating uh, these designs. I mean, I guess not a donation if I'm not really going to use it. I want to use my own designs in the campaign, but I'm definitely going to take a look at the way he built his cannons so that I can then compare uh, designs. Like, for example, I noticed a few things that he does that I'm probably not going to do in this video, but it's probably advised to do anyway. Uh, it is a good idea to armor up your turrets so that they... so that when they explode, they don't clip. A lot of different things, but for now, this just would be a good idea to get a naked cannon going. And yeah, I have a tool-barreled cannon here, but what I'm going to do is show you guys how this cannon is built and maybe even improve on it a little. It isn't perfectly optimized so I'm going to fix that. Yeah this cannon's actually fine with the small uh, rotator. Using the larger ones increases its speed. Like in fact first thing I'm going to do is advanced cannons. So under advanced cannons we're actually going to start with this new object. Two axis turret. Uh, a two axis turret basically allows it to turn in both the x and y direction. I suggest you not use this for a turret like this and instead rely on mantlets. One axis turret, which is what we're going to use, has the like it just turns in one direction. The three meter one can support a little bit more weight and so it's faster. It's also much more expensive and has much more health. Uh, the 5 meter one has a lot more health and I'm guessing, I haven't used this one yet, but I'm guessing it is very 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 fast, especially if you mount a uh, turret. So we're going to go with the one axis turret and actually yeah, we're going to go with the one axis turret here. Okay, so you have the one block axis turret uh, put down. So now we have to go through our advanced cannon parts. And I will explain what all these things do as I put it down. So I'm going to start with the 4 meter uh, autoloader. Uh, autoloaders are made to like they're basically going to load the shells. Uh, having these with the, uh, where are they? Ammo clips all connected. Make sure to select the right kind. This allows it to uh, feed ammo into the cannon and it is far more efficient to load using clips than directly from the autoloader or even directly into the firing piece. Although you can ignore shell length if you load directly into fire. Actually, I don't actually know that. So take that with a grain of salt. We're going to then... So the reason why I put this up first is because I need an idea of how tall this part is going to be. So go up two blocks from that. This is going to be the space above the autoloaders that we're going to need in order to be able to have inputs and still have them connected. Then after this, we make this a little higher. I would say a couple more blocks like this. Three blocks, I would say. We want it to have two blocks above the uh, the surface, so this represents the surface, and we're going to go up one last time and take a quick look. And we will mount our cannon here, I think. So we're going to put a firing piece right here. We go to advanced cannons, advanced firing piece, make sure it's correctly oriented as these bands so that's so you can tell which way is up and down 
and just replace this block. Actually, it's a little longer than that, isn't it? Like this? Yeah, actually that was a perfect place. So just add the firing piece. Like this. And then you add a gauge increase. We're going to make this a... Uh, a cooled system as well, but for now we just want to get the gauge to exactly 400 meters. So desired shell gauge is just going to be uh, 400 millimeter. And it's going to be firing fairly large shells. We're going to keep uh, adding the uh, gauge increasers until we get it to 400 millimeters and we have exactly enough gauge increasers for that. Now we need cooling. So this part is just gauge increasers and then the cannon uh, firing piece itself. We're going to add bear, uh, mantlet and barrels but for now we're just going to worry about getting some cooling. So make a structure like this and place down some cooling units and I will go back and forth a bit. I'm going to actually put on a mantle. Yeah. So the gauge increasers, they just increase the size of the uh, cannon and the size of the shells that are fired. This is what determines that. Uh, the cooling units determine how fast the cannon can fire aside from the reload time which is determined by the number of autoloaders that you have hooked up to the same cannon, uh, same firing piece. But what we want is a mantlet. Now the mantlets, they all do roughly the same job. They allow the, the turret to move independently of the rest of the cannon. So for example, the one meter tall elevation mantlet would allow me give me some up and down movement. I actually want the three meter tall elevation mantlet just because it allows me to fire downwards, name downwards, and so this turret is tall enough that this would actually make a difference. But at the same time, you can get away with a two meter tall one, especially with uh, lower speed shells. This is also good if you want it to be very quick at locking on, since we, but you don't need to go for a crazy 3x3 Omni Mantlet unless it's something like a, I guess like a munitions defense turret, which I had never actually made one of those. So we're just going to go with that. And now we know how far we can move this. So it's going to go out like this. And let's just say, does not go back two, this actually goes back one. And then it snakes. Now we bring it down like this. We continue like this. And we uh, use the splitter uh, to split it off. Basically, it'll receive on one end. Like, you'll know what. Uh, orientation it is if like basically you just change it around if you don't see uh, this it'll say it's not connected instead so like this and then we go for something like I think I did something similar to this yes so go and Connect it up like so. Now these do go in multiple directions. Although what I'm going to do is have a couple extra cooling units right here. And then I'm also going to have this as the final uh, age. Actually no, let's make it a little taller. So now we have all this cooling, and this is the upper part of the turret. 
and this is what we're going to ultimately want to armor up. This is what we're going to be mounting our weapons and our uh, recoil suppression onto. This is the cannon. However, if I were to fire it right now, it would have a very slow fire rate despite having low uh, cooldown. Like the turret will cool off way sooner than this can load because it takes its time for the shell to actually yeah, go from the clip to the turret itself. So the next thing we need to do is set it up so that it actually uh, allows for it to reload. Now since this, now what I did with the last one, and it's not perfectly optimal, you can definitely do slightly better by splitting it off, but at the same time, and just using a connector down. But we're not really too worried about that. We're going to set it up like this. And on the tips of each of these, we want it to extend down by one block. And you will see why in a moment. Also, this pattern is very specific. Uh, for this, you want it like this. That way we can place the clips so that they're touching and kind of flip like able, like Tetris into each other. There are four gaps in this design and you don't necessarily need to have this much, uh, like uh, this many autoloaders. I've like, like this many connections on your autoloaders. In fact, just having two is going to be enough most of the time. But for this turret, we're going to have all four so that we have the max fire rate and get the maximum bonus uh, from the uh, actual autoloaders themselves. I don't use this on that turret uh, in the background. That's because I looked at some of Damodoc's designs. And uh, like he clearly didn't need, like he didn't use all those connections. So I decided I may as well see what it would be like if I designed one with a, that was a little more minimalistic. And it worked out. So anyway, it is very compact now. I would say this turret is definitely, like it's definitely very compact. We can also erase this, it'll fit in a one by one end hole uh, of armor or you could add armor to it and have it completely uh, safe from being uh, shot down uh, like Dalmadog turrets. But there is still something completely missing from it. In fact, there are a couple things missing. And also like a couple things like this pattern here, I may as well mention it. In the way I have it, you can kind of tell each of them have four uh, autoloaders connected. This one, the ones on the outer edges are still, they look like they're connected to the middle one, but as you can see, both of these, they only have four. This is because these are separate. They're turned so that they're not, like they're turned so that they're not connecting with each other. So like that, like they're actually receiving, like they're actually turned into each other and on edge. Now we're going to, there is still one thing we're missing. We need some ammo and pit feeders. Put this all over the surface, anywhere you can. It makes sense just to cover everything besides. If it, the faster it reloads, the less time you spend waiting for it to reload. I don't know if that makes any sense. At the same time, it's a little overkill and I could probably bring the cost down by removing some of these or not having as much as well as be able to uh, embed it a little, uh, a little nicer. 
So yeah, anyway, this turret is almost done. I just need to add the rest of the cannon. So now for barrels, it's probably better to start with. Uh, does it actually matter? I mean, it depends. If you have thick armor, I would put this on the inside. But if you don't, because they're weaker, it's actually better to just start with the barrels. I'm going to use the heavy barrel. Heavy barrel start. I'm going to have two heavy barrels coming out here. And heavy barrel end. That is how I have this one, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to put a... Where are you? A bore evacuator here. I'm not going to use a muzzle brake because that slows down the velocity of the shell. And I will get into shells in a moment. Now there's still one last thing that's still wrong with this design. It will fire. This thing at this stage is going to be able to fire at a pretty decent rate. And like basically, like I believe once every 1.2 like six three seconds which isn't bad i like it definitely could be a little better if i were like if i were to go and mess with how i have this down here you can definitely replace a lot of these uh things these connectors which by the way connectors They only connect components. They will not. They will only connect autoloaders. They will not connect anything else. So don't don't even worry about putting things like uh, recoil suppression on these because there is no room for them. So I'm just going to go and make the same cooling system that this has, and so that would be two. Uh, six meter ones and two four meter ones. So go into. Also, there are railgun parts. Don't worry about those for now. For this cannon, it's not relevant. For this one, though, it is because I can either increase velocity or accuracy with it, depending on what I need. Uh, you know, hydraulic recoil absorbers. These basically will give you a certain amount of uh, recoil suppression and uh, and that's going to counter your recoil so having two of these and then two more of these should give it some recoil suppression it's not going to show up though because there's no shell anyway that's the camera done uh, camera camera it's a camera yeah this thing well I mean they both shoot at things, so I guess by that logic you could say it's a camera, right? Right? Okay. Uh, tongue fumbling aside. We need to make the shell now. Now for this, it's a 400 meter shell, so I'm guessing. I'm not good with shells, so... And I'm definitely not going to cover everything with shells but I am going to just get this cannon to fire and just to kind of showcase its power also there's no point in having this ignore this one this one's just for that big cannon so don't worry about it I am going to copy off of this though uh, so you want to make sure to grab the ammo controller also flag monkey <laughs> Black Monkey uh, Mark 9, I believe. That's pretty cool. Uh, you want ammo customizers. You do have the single modules. And I believe that's for 500 meter cannons and like in between sizes. But it is. But if you go by a completely 400 meter one, I should be able to have eight of these. Unless, unless I don't know what I'm talking about, which is very possible. That should be eight, I think. We shall see. 
to just place anything. I'll just place a HE warhead body. I'm going to set this to 400. And let's see. This is too big. Because I miscalculated. Let's just keep doing this. One more. There we go. Yeah, I'm, I miscalculated. Apparently, I could only have about uh, five of them. But that's fine. Uh, just note that it needs a four meter uh, shell rack, and the shell itself is exactly four meters long. This is, this is good. You don't want it to be uh, shorter than that. Like, you don't want it to be shorter than the length of its shell rack, although you can get away with it. It's just better to have a uniform gauge, like 400. Now, if it was 408, then it would need a 5 meter shell rack, and it would only be 80 millimeters uh, longer. Which, that's a problem, and it is not worth scaling it back and using a single piece for it, when you can just scale the, by the gauge down by uh, 8 millimeters. Anyway, now with that out of the way, I'm just going to make a quick shell. I'm this the shell system is so complicated. Even I don't understand it completely. So that warrants its own tutorial, or like slash walkthrough slash uh, derping around video. So I am not going to show that on camera. Okay, I got my design. It's just a simple frag missile setup. I'm just going to go and mention a few things. This I could change, but since it's frag, it doesn't matter. I could leave it at 10. I normally put it at 5. Uh, so basically, gunpowder casing. I have gunpowder case casing. Why would I ever want to slow the shell down? Like, really? Uh, the gunpowder casing is there just so that the shell actually passes through. I mean, like, like that's to get the velocity up. Higher velocity, the better. Aim for something at least 400. At the very least, I guess 300, unless you're going for some kind of, like, lobbing artillery type gun. Uh, the base bleeder. This is something uh, that I didn't actually know what to do with until I uh, went and talked with Domadoc a bit. So the base bleeder actually reduces cooldown and increases the velocity by a bit. So there is no reason not to have a base bleeder on a shell. Like, especially with the fact that it reduces the cooldown and increases the velocity by a bit. So you, you definitely need one of these. It does make it a little bit easier to detect though, so I would be very, very careful. The inertial fuse is going to make it so that if it deflects off of something like shields, it goes off. Like shields or armor, it'll go off. The frag warhead creates an explosion of fragments, basically. And if you set it to 180, it gets a damage buff, apparently. And that's why it is used over HE. I have all three of these set to 180. It uh, used to be better to set them to be as concentrated as possible. Now you just have it, like, open. Uh, the frag head is just going to be left on uh, normal. I don't actually know what to do with this. It's probably better to make it 180, but I'm going to leave it at 60 just so that it has some pierce, uh, piercing effect. So, so, yeah, this is the shell. We're going to load it up into the cannon, and once it's loaded, I will... Just fire it, just so that you guys can, like, uh, see. Okay, it's fully reloaded. So, let's just fire it a couple times. Yeah, this is okay. It's a pretty high fire rate. It's similar to the fire rate of the other cannon, except it's firing much bigger shells that are dealing a lot more damage and moving at a slightly higher velocity. So 
yeah, you can see it, it's pretty effective. Uh, on top of that, its ammo should not be going down by much. So it should be able to fire for a long time before it has to reload. Uh, now the thing is still pretty inaccurate, even though it has a very uh, large turret. In fact, I would rather this gun have a shorter barrel. Uh, rail systems are a great way to deal with this, but you have to have, but as you can see with this turret, you can see there are a lot of parts that definitely aren't on this design. Like there are a lot of railgun chargers that just are trying to charge the railgun. And in fact, I see a few more places I could place them if I really uh, was so inclined. Uh, the railgun charger magnet, which is attached to the gun barrel, like attached by the mantlet. And that's needed so that it is able to, like you need, I would say you just really only need one of these uh, per barrel. So if I were to like put, so I would like, like I guess to show you guys how this will work, because it is still pretty short. If I want to change this for rails, I would have to change the mantlet to the two meter tall AA mantlet. Which is okay, I guess. And then I would go into here. And that's the attaching fixture. Then I would go here, add this single one, go into the railgun settings, disable uh, the this just so that it isn't all over the place. You could keep it if you want, I just don't like it. And uh, so it shows like the shell inaccuracy. So you could, for example, put all the power directly into an accuracy buff, and just one of these will uh, work. So just so just to like see it, it should be like fully charged now. Uh, at one hundred. The inaccuracy went way down, and I can adjust this. So I could be like, I have a like a 25% accuracy buff. So now the inaccuracy is about halved, like a little less than halved. So this is very powerful, and it's a good way to reduce the size of your turrets, like this. So I'm just going to like be like this and shrink the size a bit and the inaccuracy is still decent even though I reduced its size. In fact I could probably do this again if I wanted by removing this and then adding my super cavitation base. Like the thing is though you have to keep in mind and I did forget to talk about this. Gunpowder, like, you're going to need a, a certain length. So this is going to need to be 9 uh, meters. This shell needs a barrel that is 9 meters long, which is exactly what we need for propellant burn. For accuracy, we don't care as much because we're going to be using some of our precious power to... Uh, fire it. So let's just change this, uh, remove uh, a barrel, re add a poor evacuator, so now this thing should still have its max speed, and it is a little faster, it's going to have a bunch of rechargers on every surface that they fit. like this. And this, oh, I said mirror mode before I forget. Now do these fit? One of the few things that can connect to these are the railgun chargers. So 
place them in like this. Like, and originally this was a railgun turret, which is why this is acceptable. So now it's actually okay. We have a use for all this extra space. So now we have a whole bunch of railgun chargers, and we're using some of that to increase its accuracy and speed. So now, this turret actually fires a decent amount. Also, we can add a bit more recoil suppression. So let's just do that. Put a recoil absorber here. There's going to be an extra space here so that maybe we can like mount the sensor package with the antenna in there. And we're going to do a similar thing here with a single. We can use a two meter connector here and it won't be visible or anything. Like it is just going to clip through the mantle a bit. Uh, we could actually connect a single recoil absorber here and connect it to one of the side pieces. So now it should have enough. Uh, so, so it's like one thing to note: adding the rail system has increased its uh, fire rate, but it's also like. Like, no, it hasn't increased its fire rate. It actually increased its recoil. And we so we're just compensating by adding a few more of these. Increasing the length of these probably will help too. So, like this. So now we should have enough uh, recoil absorption to counter this. So now when I fire it, it should fire it should be fairly accurate even with a short barrel in fact it's even more accurate than it was before and it fires at a higher speed but it is using a bit of power each shot not much but like like 500 but just having that single rail charger like rail and like the basic rail charger system we with the like charger recharger system we have managed to get this turret firing at a higher rate basic like not a like higher accuracy and higher speed so this makes it a little more effective and it just costs a little bit of extra power to run and this is what i would be uh going with for a final design so the final part of making your cannon. Once you're satisfied with a design, I suggest you go and you armor it up or something. But once, like, add sensors if you're so inclined, if you like having uh, turret mounted sensors like I do. And then uh, I want you to go and save sub object. And this is how you save it. And I'm just going to call this thing, I don't know. Actually, I'm going to call it Rail Slinger. It's a Rail Slinger, guys. It, it slings shells. It's a Slug Rail Slinger. Yes. Yeah, well, why not? A Slug Rail Slinger. That's, that's the most derpy name I've ever come up for a turret. But as you can see, it is pretty good. Because I decreased the... The length of the barrel it no longer clips with that which is good also means that'll be easier to mount on a ship and if i let it fire at uh damadox creation over there you can see it's actually a really powerful shell especially if it hits a flat surface so yeah already got lots of little holes and damage Anyway, it appears that I'm all out of time. Hopefully by now you have a vague understanding of the advanced cannon systems, the components, and how they work. Uh, I didn't script this, so I may have come off as a bit uh, rambly. Uh, hopefully that doesn't cause a problem or anything. But we made this cannon. It actually is fairly effective, and I will be using it on the song. See you next time.